Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's roundtable, we have for, you know, I'm not even paying this guy. He just likes to show up and take the abuse we offer every week. Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Looking forward to boot camp here coming up in uh, just a short time. Uh, same here. Same here. It's, it's going to be amazing. We got Bearland Aaron. He's back. Hey, every yeah, back. So he's becoming a looking fixture. forward to uh, yeah, looking forward to boot camp. We're still still planning on it. Yeah. By the way, I don't even need to meditate anymore on Tuesdays because just seeing his face, hearing his voice, I feel so centered, so calm. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. The Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. Happy 2018. Happy 2018. Um, yeah. Is it cold, by the way? Up in Bastion? <laughs> that was horrible, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Bastion? What's that? <laughs> Haverhill? Not for a Wim uh, uh, devotee, it's not cold. Okay. How do you get away wearing that, that, that Haverhill fire shirt if you can't even say the town, Mark? I, you know. I know, I know. It's terrible. I, you know, I, I did my Wim Hof cold shower because now it's like cold here. It's like 40s in the morning. It, it, it is invigorating. That is not cold. Yeah. No, I know, but for us it is. My water is colder. And then Mark, last but not least. That's cold. Thank you. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd happy new year same to you man how's it going good good so uh as eric mentioned we've got boot camp in a few days boot camp in a few days and for those of you that haven't signed up for the san antonio boot camp the next one i believe is vegas so go to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and start making your plans now um Eric, for you, what what do you what are the, some of the takeaways you get from boot camp? Why should we even go to boot camp? So, I think from a beginner's uh, point of view, um, you know, someone that's either just bought the investor toolkit or maybe is in flight school currently, um, you know, I mean, it's just going to be so eye opening to um, to attend the sessions to just get a better grasp on how the whole business works from, from start to finish. Um, and, and kind of see examples of, of how to do different, you know, pieces of the business, whether that's scrubbing lists or, um, marketing or, uh, any of the aspects of the business get touched on. Um, so from a beginner standpoint, I mean, that is really, really great information that you're not going to get just, going through the toolkit or something. Um, and then of course you have the connections you're going to make. Um, you're going to meet other people that are either doing land investing or are interested in it. And as you progress, um, those connections are going to be important to you. Um, people to, to bounce ideas off of, um, people to wholesale to, to maybe buy properties from, you know, um, and the list goes on. So, um, you know, that's, that's a big piece of boot camp that, uh, I think is, is great. Yeah. How about for you, Berlin, Aaron, how many boot camps have you been to now? Uh, just two or three. Um, we, everything Eric said was right on point. Um, there it is, you know, whether you're a newbie or been doing the business for a while, boot camp is still always full of those aha moments um, where something just connects um, maybe it was a struggle or maybe it was just something you didn't think of previously but you're kind of like oh okay yeah that makes sense there's it, it, it's full of those things but then it's kind of nice too because it also offers um, it offers a unique I guess vacation opportunity um, you know, get away, 
go do something that's not in your norm. Um, and the nice thing is it's, a, you know, it's, it's a business expense, it's education, that sort of thing. But um, we're going to some really nice places, um, some nice hotels that um, make it just a pleasure to be at. It's not like some conference where you're drudging to a room to go sit and be bored. Um, boot camp is just an incredible experience. And that's why you hear people going to them over and over again, because um, not only is it educational, but um, and it's quite an experience in it in and of itself that makes it well worth the trip year after year or quarter after quarter. We enjoy them immensely. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Zen Master Mike? This is like your 50th. Yeah, we love them. Um, I, I always tell people, you go to the boot camp, no matter where you are in this business, you're going to go to another level. doesn't matter if you've been doing it for a long time, if you're brand new, you're thinking about getting started, no matter what, you're going to take it to a higher level. And uh, like Aaron was saying, you know, the connections and, and the networking. Personally, Laura and I go to <clears throat> all of them just for the inspiration, being around people that are taking the business at such a high level, always chasing big brother Scott Todd, always trying to catch up, see what he's doing, trying to learn from the new uh, ideas and methods he's employing. It's just that inspiration is invaluable. I mean, you surround yourself by these types of people and success is sure to follow. Yeah. Scott Todd, why do you keep showing up for these, these boot camps? <clears throat> Um, well, Mark, I can tell you that, uh, I mean, everybody just said kind of the same, you know, very, very same things, but I go there just for one nugget, one or two pieces of, of advice. If I can just get one or two pieces, the, the room is always like, this is a market, right? So like, it's a market that's ever changing. And just because we learn something in October doesn't mean that it's the exact same. So maybe the principles are the same, but maybe there's something new on the marketing front. Maybe there's something new on the, on the negotiation front. Maybe there's something new, like there's, there's new smokes, if you will. And all it takes is one little piece to kind of correct something or to, to change your business. And so I'm just looking for that one little piece of gold that I can put into place to make something a little bit better. And I like to teach too. So it's uh, fun for me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, this is like my file, this.com moment that Scott just stole my reason that I personally love boot camp. It's, it's that little nugget that is always, it always shows up in the oddest of spots. Sometimes it's in the room. Sometimes it's during a break where someone just kind of comes up to you and be like, Hey, did you know about this? I'm like, uh, no. And like, it like totally changes everything, right? Sometimes it's a phrase. Sometimes it's just one simple phrase that we weren't utilizing that makes all the difference. And I can tell you, we're getting such higher down, down payments now because Scott Todd was like, oh, this is how we get big down payments. It was this one phrase. How much would you like to put down? For years, we never asked, how much would you like to put down? It was like, you know, you got to put down uh, two ninety nine or whatever it was, whatever we advertised. As soon as we started saying that phrase, it totally changed everything. We got better buyers. We got bigger down payments. That one little nugget. I mean, and and we keep getting these every single time that we're at boot camp. And then just the fact that the people in the room, the room always becomes so much smarter than just the presenter, because for whatever reason, we attract really, really smart, good people. And no one there has what I would call scarcity mentality, right? They're not like holding their knowledge to their chest and they're not sharing. Like everyone's sharing what they're doing, how they're doing it, what works for them. And it's, and it's amazing. It really is a very special um, weekend. And then just to be able to, to meet us face to face, like, you know, putting, putting the voice with the, the name and, and, or, the, or, the, or the face, like, you know, go up to Eric Peterson at a break and be like, Oh my gosh, you're you're John Not Pro, right? And it's like, you know, that's they, crazy. They probably then, say they probably say something like, "I love John Not Pro." Yeah, and that's the thing. And then Eric gets to go like, you know, come out of these. By the way, this is the third person that's come up to me and said Mark's a jerk and John Not Pro has been phenomenal, right? Or you know, or his hair you know, is always perfect. <laughs> exactly. Even exactly. Person. You know how how did you get that big deal away from Mark? Like, what did you do? No I hadn't forgot about that, Eric. Right. Or, you know, just meeting Mike uh, in the break and, and just talking to him about, you know, how did you start? Like, you know, you're $40,000 in debt. Like, 
how, how did you get out of that so quickly? What, what did you, what was your focus? What was your, you know, I mean, these just little things that you don't get if you're not there. And then of course, you know, you just get smarter by, you know, being near Bearland Aaron or Scott Todd, like just being closer to them. You just, Oh my gosh, I, my IQ just went up 10 points. Like it's, it's crazy. So, um, that alone, just the networking, the people, and then the depth of knowledge is, is so great for boot camp, um, And then we always do something a little differently, right, Scott? Every time, yeah. Every time. It's never, it's we, never the Because we learn, right? Because we're learning yeah, we learn. from feedbacks. And so we get better too. Right, right. Yeah, we, yeah, we always get, we always take the feedback to heart and, and make little iterations and it's great. It's great. So we were talking uh, on the last round table about goal setting and setting these goals and how we're setting them. But then we didn't really get into the weeds of the barriers to execution. What are the things that get in the way where you don't end up hitting your goals? So Zen Master Mike, what are those things for you? Um, I think one of the biggest problems with achieving goals is, you know, just taking on too many things at once. Right. So if you make your goals too broad or they include too many aspects, I mean, I've, I've heard you talk about, you know, you'll have five things to accomplish for the week. Keep it simple. You know, when you add too many things into the mix, it tends to really um, just complicate things. Right. And when things get complicated, then you start to get frustrated. When you get frustrated, you don't perform at your highest level and then things don't get done. So one of the biggest barriers to goal setting, I think, is being too broad and, and setting too many. Right. And to keep it very specific. And that's why all of us employ the mentality of the 12 week year. It just keeps things very hyper focused. And that should alone help you from straying off this path and going into the no man's land where you're just doing too many things and nothing is getting accomplished. Yeah, I, I agree. How about you, Bearland Aaron? What are some of the barriers to execution for you with your, your goals? Uh, well, like Mike said, you know, getting too many things in there is definitely an issue. Um, the 12 week year helps with that. But even as far as the 12 week year goes, um, you know, if you're just beginning to implement it, um, a piece of advice is, you know, you, you will have all these things you want to do and, you know, they tell you, you know, try to, try to limit it to three. Um, sometimes don't even limit it to three, maybe two or one, because uh, sometimes three can, can distract you from what's really the most important thing, that one thing, you know, there's a book about the one thing too. Um, so really make sure you're working on what is most important. And then the other thing that I find, is the most limiting to myself is myself. Um, you know, for, for various reasons, you can get off track and, uh, you know, you can, you can beat yourself up about it and then keep yourself on track or you can start to feel fear um, for various reasons. Sometimes even when you're about to achieve your goal, you're, you know, you have the fear of, well, what's next, you know, those sort of things. Um, so you got to be careful to not let yourself, be your biggest obstacle um, because there's so many ways that you can, um, but just keep it simple and keep moving forward and know that, you know, when you accomplish this, you will then go through the process again and set your new things. So don't worry about uh, what's next and, you know, make sure you accomplish what you're trying to, and then, then you can worry about what's next, those sort of things. So don't let fear and, uh, and getting in your own head too much be your biggest obstacle. Yeah, it's it's so true. How about you, Eric? Well, I like what Aaron said. I, I definitely think um, ourselves are, you know, a big um, thing that gets in the way, right? I mean, whether it's um, us not believing in ourselves or just not executing or any number of things. But um, what I would add to that is um, probably just general distractions get in your way. So, um you know, that's why it's important to write down your goals and review them on a regular basis, whether you're rewriting them every day or you're looking at them once a week or um, whatever works for you. But, um, you know, don't let shiny objects syndrome get in the way. You know, you hear about a new whatever it is, you know, Bitcoin going crazy or um, <laughs> whatever it is at the moment, you know, and, and uh, 
not letting those things distract you from um, from what your focus is for for this twelve weeks and and then the next and and so on down the line. So, um, you know, and one great way to do that is just to establish good habits and um, you know make that part of your routine and um, follow through on that, and that'll keep you on task. And uh, you know, if you've done your reverse engineering and, and looked at all those numbers and, and various aspects of your business. Um, if you build habits around those things, um, it's going to help you that much more to achieve your goals. Awesome. How about you, Scott Todd? I think that, um, I think you just have to be committed, right? You just have to like commit to the goal and don't stop and don't, don't let the self doubt, um, kind of, kind of get into your head. It's easy for the, for the brain, the inner voice to start talking to you and say like, what are you doing? Like, what makes you think that you're good enough to do this? What makes you think that you can do this? What makes you think that this is going to work for you? What makes you, I mean, it's that inner voice and we all have it. It's amazing. I was listening to a, um, to a podcast the other day with someone that was like extremely successful, extremely successful. I was blown away by the fact that they were talking about the inner voice, right? Like the, the, their brain was telling them you can't do this. And I think that what makes successful people and what helps you to achieve your goal is just doing it anyway. Yeah. How, how often does Parkinson's law of time get in the way for you guys where what I mean by Parkinson's law of time, it's, it's, you know, work will expand to the amount of time you give it. So if you give yourself two hours to complete a project, it'll take you two hours. If you give yourself two weeks to complete that same project, it'll actually take two weeks. Um, does that, is that ever a thing for you guys? Uh, Barry Lynn Aaron, you're shaking your head. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge thing. Um, the, you know, and I guess uh, if you're a pusher, um, you can, you know, compress those time, spots down a little bit so you can accomplish more. Um, if you're worried about accomplishing it all, um, you, you definitely want to make sure it fits within your, your goals time frame. Um, the worst thing you can do is leave it open-ended because it may never get done. You know, um, it's a real thing. It's huge. Um, you know, and while you're back engineering your goal, you know, that's something you need to think about. Like how long should, these steps take and give yourself that. Um, because if you do, if you give yourself too much time, you'll take too much time. It's human nature. Um, even the, you know, the best, um, most mentally strong people, you know, ha have that as well. So uh, Parkinson's law is definitely something to be aware of when you're doing that. And I think the best way to avoid it is when you're back engineering to uh, prefigure that out and, only give yourself that amount of time that's necessary to do it and uh, not, not make it too easy on yourself by giving you these, giving yourself these time gaps to let, let yourself stretch it out. All right. How about you Zen master Mike? I think it's an important topic. And I think that on the flip side, don't take it to the other extreme and keep yourself not enough time to do something because then you go into the process what we were talking about in the last podcast where you're not enjoying the moment. You're so fixated on that short amount of time that you've dictated or set aside to do something that you're not giving it its full due and not giving it the attention it deserves, right? It's like listening to your son or daughter tell a story when you know you have to be somewhere else. And unfortunately, you've probably all done this and you're just kind of like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and, you know, you're not giving them that full due. So, and then you suffer in the long run from that. So it just, you know, on both sides of the equation, don't definitely don't prolong things, but don't something's going to take a certain amount of time. Don't try to squeeze it down if it's going to take away from the experience of doing it and doing it correctly. Yeah, I just uh, finished listening to this book, Geography of Bliss by Eric Weiner, this NPR correspondent. And he goes to all these countries and tries to extract, like, why are the Swiss happy? Why are, you know, why are they so happy in Iceland? But one of the places he goes is Thailand. And in Thailand, they all say the same thing if we're not having joy with our work, then what's the point? Like it should be fun. Right. And they, they extract joy out of everything they do. And like the smile there is a big thing. Like they'll even smile at a funeral. There's all different types of smiles. Right. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? 
Um, well, I think Mike and Un- Aaron, Parkinson's law of change. Sorry. Yeah, no, I yeah. think Mike and Aaron both covered it pretty well. Um, you know, for myself, I, I guess, um, being sort of a perfectionist of sorts or, or maybe wanting to maintain control of things. Um, I think that's something I can easily get into where, um, I let tasks, um, take longer than they need to, or what have you. Um, it's very rare for me to rush through something and do a poor job. Um, it's usually the opposite to spend more time than, than is really needed. So, um, something I'm, I'm constantly trying to keep a check on and, um, you know, keep a balance too. Yeah. Scott Todd, do you ever have that issue or you're spinning the plates? No, I, I think we all have that problem, Mark. I think that it's easy to get into. I think that it's, um, you know, you, you think, okay, well, I have two weeks to do this and then you might start it. And then, you know, like we, you get down to the, to the, like the last couple of days and you start to stress out. Right. So, um, I think that we all get in that situation. I think the easiest way to do it is, okay, I'm just going to get this done right now. You know, it doesn't matter when, when you've set a deadline for yourself, just work on it until you get it done and then be done with it. Yeah, absolutely. Easy to say, right? Yeah. And I think going back to what you said before, Scott, about fear, uh, that Tim Ferriss fear setting exercise. Yeah. uh, And you can just Google it. It really, really helps. And I mean, you know, Mike is, kind of like me now like kind of obsessed with death we've got the death clock on our chrome tab and um look Still you know days more that's ridiculous it, it might have more days than me but i like but it, it it builds in like it's a weird thing like it builds in like i don't have all the time in the world and you know like as i'm as i'm finishing up uh the book dirt rich and you know, I have all these doubts, all these fears. The problem with the book is that once it's done, I can't go back and iterate, right? Like the toolkit, I can always go back and iterate. The videos, the horrible YouTube videos I make, I can always go back and and like, you know, do them again and iterate. But like the book is like, it's done. And it's a really, really scary thing. And then I just think to myself, well, you know, so what, right? I'll write another one if it sucks. I mean, it'll it'll be good enough. You know, you can always then record the audible version and expand on, you know, because I love when authors do that. You know, you get yeah. so much more because they're like, hey, this part here, you know. Yeah, see, I'm going to do that. But, you know, but there is that doubt I have and that fear and, you know, the, you know, people are going to judge me and the critics and this and that. But you know what? I only got like, like, like 111,000 days left anyways. zeno has got 20 more days than me. In three generations, no one are going to remember it anyways. It's all meaningless. We're yeah. dust. We're like we're here for a blink of an eye, and um, you know, so we might as well enjoy the ride while we're here, and uh, and do that, and and get some stuff done in the meantime that is significant and meaningful. So that's going to bring us into the tips of the week because my tip is amazing. Uh, oh, by the way, today's podcast is sponsored by TLfolio.com. Get some cash. On your note, go to tlfolio.com, sell 12 to 18 months of your cash flow, then that note reverts back to you. Take two bites of the apple, get your money out, then let that note revert back to you. tlfolio.com. Eric Peterson, what's your tip of the week? All right. Um, I'm going to go with a Chrome plugin today called AFS, Advanced Facebook Search. I'll put the uh, link in the chat, take a look at it. It's a Chrome plugin, you install it, you go to Facebook and um, you could do some more advanced um, searches than you can do with just the the standard search bar. Um, So, you know, I mean, in terms of how you might use it for the business, um, you know, maybe there's someone that, comments on your page or has left you a review or whatever, and you want to um, dig into them a little bit more and, and see if, you know, maybe you can sell them more land or um, I don't know, you know, what, whatever you might have in mind. Um, or even if you're, you're messaging with somebody and you, you want to um, get some more details to, to be able to um, offer them the right piece of land, um, this search tool might give you some some insight into uh those various facebook 
profiles and, and what's out there. All right. I just added it. Is that a stalking app? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you could use it for that. Yeah. So there is that aspect, but. Oh, wait, Mike, 11,097 days left for me as I Listen, changed 11, I have 11,115. I won't have time to mourn you. I'll be, I'll be dead shortly thereafter. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. That was a good tip. Eric, that was a good tip. I, yeah, I, don't, I, I just downloaded it. I think there's some, some research aspects to it that you could use, um, even from marketing your properties as well. No, I think if you're looking at like preppers or interests, this is a great way to use Facebook Graph. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Bearland Aaron, what's your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Okay. Um, for folks that have a lot of social media type accounts, um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You go to each app and you log in and you, you have to post on there. And wouldn't it be nice if you could have like a lot of them all in one spot on kind of one messenger panel? Um, there's a program called Franz, F-R-A-N-Z. I think the, uh, the web address is meetfranz.com. Um, they have their fifth generation in beta right now. You can download the fourth generation of it. Um, but it links your, like your Facebook messenger, Slack, um, WhatsApp, Gmail, um, I think Twitter, like a lot of different accounts all together on, on one panel. Um, so you don't have, you can save a little time by not having to switch around that sort of thing. Um, haven't used it yet, but I thought it looked pretty darn cool. That is geeky. That is cool. Nice. All right. Zen Master, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? Well, since we are at the beginning of the uh, year and we're talking about goal setting and whatnot, um, I two, find two parts to mine. One is, I and I've touched upon it earlier when we are talking, to slow down and enjoy the process because, you know, this is a moment to moment process and, and it is in the moment as you know, Mark and I would be kind of joking about, but serious. I mean, this is a, you know, we only have so much time allotted to us, so don't make it stressful. This should be a fun business. In fact, it is a fun business. It's something that you can take step by step and enjoy the process. So I think that's really important to remember, especially we're starting out this year with all these goals and whatnot. And also um, something that we talk about quite a bit, but just remind you surround yourself to achieve these goals Surround yourself with people that are like-minded. It's not going to do any good to share these goals with people who are negative or people who don't believe in the power of goal setting. I don't even believe that, uh, you know, we can be more than we are right now. Right. So be, be very cognizant of who you surround yourself with. And that's why, you know, I constantly go to these boot camps, Laura and I, and we surround ourselves with successful people who have similar mind uh, thought processes because this really does um, affect you dramatically. So just be, be clear on that. You know, you don't want, don't toss around these goals like they're, um, like they're just some kind of random statement. Like they're really powerful goal. Like, you know, uh, in some cultures they take like the stick and they write the goal on it and throw it in the fire and the smoke, you kind of, you know, whiff it over you. And it's really like an empowering process. This is, this is huge. Right. And so don't belittle it by just kind of talking in it like over, you know, uh, over, you know, uh, some coffee with friends who don't believe in it, you know, just make sure you take it serious and realize the power that's uh, in inherent within it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, how much faith do you put into reviews like on Amazon, Yelp, TripAdvisor? What do you think? I think I put a lot of faith yeah. in the wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. Hey, check, check this out. There's, there's a website I want you to go to. It's called fakespot.com. And uh, when you go there, you can take a link from Amazon, post it into fake spot, and it will tell you based on their analysis, based on their engine, whether or not that those ads are fake or not. So in the chat, I actually put in a kind of a sample one, but you could do it with any product. And the one that I found was like a, an I, uh, what is an Apple ear, AirBot, AirPod or whatever, like a knockoff of one that's rated like five star rating, you know, four, four, just under, just over four on Amazon. And then when you plug in the URL to fakespot.com, it tells you that, hey, 60, 
3.8% of these reviews are fake. And uh, actually, they readjust the rating down to a two star. And they even tell you like, hey, this guy's review is fake and here's why. Here's another guy, like overwhelming amount of positive, like this one guy has an over amount, uh, overwhelming amount of positive reviews. And um, correlation with other fake review profile data and language. So it's pretty, pretty smart. Kind of makes you really question even to Yelp things. I went on the Yelp and checked it out and I was like, wow, wow. There's a lot of shenanigans being played with these reviews. Wow. I love this. I love this. This is great. Oh my gosh. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Fakespot.com. Um, well, my tip of the week is a simple quote. Mike, don't get offended. But uh, every year I like to read and reread Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. And I was, of course, reading it this morning. And uh, in the very beginning of the book, he says, when you know your why, you can endure anyhow. And the power of purpose in your why. So I think for, you know, as we, as we start 2018, it's always a good time to kind of revisit. Yeah, a great book, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Your why, because as you go through the trials and tribulations of your business and your life, What's going to fuel you through that is going to be revisiting your why. And um, so that's my tip of the week. Pretty deep, profound. Scott's like, what? Oh, what? No, I was going to say, Mark, that's a great tip. But I do have a second tip. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Nobody likes accounting. Nobody likes taxes. And on January 20th, Saturday, January 20th, I'm going to go through the 2018 update to the Accounting for Land Investors class. So if you want more information, go to scotttodd.com or scotttodd.net forward slash accounting and learn more about it. It's coming up. There's only a few more days to register. Uh, get prepared for your accountant because there's some tips in there that will literally put money in your pocket. It, it will pay for the, the course by itself. I promise you. I love it. ScottTodd.net forward slash accounting. Well, are we good guys? It was good, good round table. Great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I want to thank all the listeners, remind them the only way Eric Peterson is going to continue my, you know, take my bad jokes and Zen master Mike is going to continue listening to my bad Boston accent. And you know, <laughs> Bear land Aaron is even going to just show up and, uh, and all that good stuff. You got to subscribe. You got to rate and got to review the podcast. Sends a screenshot of your review to support at the landgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Don't forget about bootcamp. We got the next one coming up in 90 days. Go to the landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. Start making your plans now. For those of you that are going to be in San Antonio, we can't wait to see you. And uh, ready? One, two, three. Let's. Let Freedom, Freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, it's 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 lunchtime <laughs> here. <laughs> that was a very long, awkward pause. Man, it took you forever. Like to like move on. Come on, Mike. I know. I know. Get faster with that thing. Hit the button How, faster. By, by the way, Mike just took that last sip of Ember. How good is the last sip? Just like the first sip. It's just like the first sip. What's Ember? Except when the battery dies, it doesn't last very long. It's oh. it's an hour. You got to recharge it. How long does it take to drink a coffee? Hey, not milk. Wait a minute. How How we're not, we're not in Europe, in Eric. It's usually dead by the time I'm done. He's like European. He's like, you know, like, you know, taking his time, drinking his coffee. We got uh, stuff to do, man. Drink espresso, Aaron. Just forget it. Just forget the enjoyment. Go to espresso. So, yeah, Aaron, go to ember.com. It's a cup <laughs> that keeps your coffee and your tea hot at your perfect temperature. Oh. Yeah. Look, look, that, that's ridiculous.
I drink that's, too fast. That's it. Yeah, I mean, like if you if you're who lingers on to a drink that fast? Like it's gone, man. There's no way. No, oh, no, no. Enjoy the moment, Scott. You can't drink it too fast. This is Ember. Uh, Enjoy the moment. Yeah. That's what they should I, I, I got to see the fake reviews on this one. Can I get it on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't burst our bubble. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I, I think oh, it's all. Oh. I, think it's like, I think you guys, Ember Mug. Okay, I'm doing it right now. Ember Mug. Okay, I found the. Holy crap. You guys, really? It's that expensive? <laughs> Holy! I can tell you guys already been ripped off. Priceless is a good. What are you talking of about? That my I, I just sold a Colorado deal last week. They paid for it. Oh, oh, oh fake it. spot. Fake Uh-oh. spot gave it a B rating, and eighty uh, percent of the reviews are accurate. But that means twenty percent are like fake, fake, phony, fake news. That's pretty good though. Come on, that's pretty high okay. actually. I'd have to say it survived. It, it passed the fake spot test. Pretty good. Hey, I will yeah. tell you though that um, one of the cool things I like about this fake spot, and if you scroll down on it, is not only does it show you the review count over time, but it also shows you the price tracking. So you're getting a good deal or not. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Good yeah. quality for this money. By the way, we haven't even talked about Star Wars. Has everyone seen Star Wars? I have not <sighs> seen Star Wars yet. Uh, you've not seen it? No, no I'm so bummed. And you call yourself down. a geek? I'm still waiting to see the first one. Oh, man. Oh, oh my gosh. That's what is that? Painful. Hope? Wait, Mike, you thought, it was, you thought it was disappointing? Until my brother sent me an article that basically described the fact that it was rebuilding something, had to destroy something, so I got it. Now, I, now I'm okay with it, but it was, it was just, come on. They, poor Luke. The he was All right, da, 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 don't, you're going to spoil it. It's yeah. all spoilers. What's that? Thanks, spoilers. Mike. Thanks. Well, no spoilers. spoilers. It doesn't mean anything. It means everything. <laughs> man, I'm going to sit in the theater and be like, that Zeno spoiled it for me. Poor Luke. Oh, not the whole time the- we're going to be watching those scenes with Luke. Like, I will give it? you one hint. Not about anything. This doesn't spoil anything. But most movies, you wait till the very end and you just get a little, you get a little uh, something at the end. Nothing. You know, the Good credits call. go by, and then, like, they blow up like, I, a little teaser. You, you, I, I thought the thing with Carrie Fisher was nice at the end. They dedicated the movie to her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Aaron, do they have theaters where you are? Man, I didn't think they had anything. I, I... Yeah, yeah, they have, they have theaters, Scott. Was, I mean, it, what is it, like, drive was it like two cinemas or a drive-in? Well, no, it's like you drive into town, and then there's the – they got the, the little store. building with the they screen the in it, you know, store. the one screen. Right. No, no, we have a drive-in, and it's winter, so. Oh, well, that's miserable. Oh, my God. Aaron, you, you, you have to wait till spring to see it. it. Well, not. I mean, <laughs> I, within a your... half hour, I have, like, a movie 16 or something. But... What do you do? Take your horse and buggy into town? <laughs> Load up the family, little house on oh the prairie style? <laughs> Michael Landon. Hey, we, that's his new, this that's is that's Amish new country. Name, Michael Landon. Oh man! No, I mean Landon. <laughs> we take buggy trail up the way. No, really, this is Amish country. You see it every day. Wow! Driving their their buggy with the horses, but no, we no have wonder, we have. No wonder he's never heard of Ember. <laughs> man, you know what? I drink my coffee too fast. I already went through the tank in the Keurig while we were on this podcast. You better you better drink a lot of water because I, I my cousin was in town and he was telling me he got kidney stones, the most painful thing ever because he wasn't drinking enough water. Like it dehydrates you. Mm. So you get, drink water. If you're going to drink that much coffee, the caffeine. cause he's like, I yeah, won't definitely. go into, into the details, but like you better drink some water. You don't want those things. Yeah, it's we like, definitely, I definitely drink some water. I stay hydrated. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, listen, have a great one. Thanks guys. All right.